Welcome back, curious people. The statement reads, A certain coaxial cable consists of a copper wire radius A surrounded by a concentric copper tube of inner radius C. The space between is partially filled from B out to C with the material of dielectric constant epsilon R as shown. Find the capacitance per unit length of this cable. A quick review of the diagram, and we see that we have the wire from 0 to A, the dielectric from A to B, and then the copper tube from B to C. Much like the last question, the dielectric constant and Gauss's law and displacement are things we'll need to know for this question. Alright, so the question said that it wants to know what the capacitance per unit length is, meaning that we have to take the capacitance and divide it by the length L. As we see here, this is what it uh, simplifies down to. So what we need is Q and V. So let Q be the charge on a length L of the copper wire. And uh, now we'll just need to find V, the potential. We use Gauss's law for the electric displacement. And we see that the uh, free and closed charge is just Q, uh, which we'll see why we label it as that soon. Um, but since we are in a cylinder, the Gaussian surface yields a surface area of 2 pi s times L. So solving for D gives us Q over 2 pi s L in the s hat direction. We found the electric displacement so that we could then find the electric field from it with the different changes of permittivity um, since E is equal to D over epsilon. So for the electric field, consider the requirements for the different regions. Uh, for A to B, we are in air, right? So our dielectric constant will therefore be one, and we can see that it cancels to one in our simplification here, and we're left with uh, the electric field in A to B uh, is equal to Q over two pi epsilon naught SL in the S hat direction. Um, however, for B to C, we are in the dielectric, so we have to keep both of the permittivity terms there. Uh, but we get a similar electric field just with epsilon r instead of 1. Uh, from here, we can find the potential, much like last question. We have to work our way from the outside to the inside. And we know that we know that the potential is just the line integral of the electric fields. So we break them down into their respective regions and then substitute in the field for BC and the field for AB. And we start... Uh, simplifying them before we evaluate the integrals, factoring out a lot of the similar same terms. So then we're left with the term in the parentheses, which we can just evaluate straightforward. Uh, note that we have uh, 1 over s, which evaluates to the natural log, but since it's ln minus another ln, it's the same as dividing by the inside term. So that's how we got c over b and b over a. Um, now, to find the capacitance, we, or the ratio of the capacitance, we just simply plug it into what we found earlier, Q over VL, and you see the Qs cancel, so that's why we didn't define them. But also, we see that the uh, Ls for the length cancel, leaving us with this uh, box dancer as our capacitance per unit length.